I'm Hazel, it's almost Saturday today, and that makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WoW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week in WoW, of course, the huge news was Classic's release on Monday, and it was massive. It has been the number one game on Twitch. It seemed to go mostly smoothly. And the big issue that people seem to have been running into and continuing to run into are just very, very long server queues. A recurring theme in tweets that I've seen on my timeline uh, from people that are enjoying Classic are, man, I have to sit in the server queue before I can get back in. I guess this would be a good time for me to you know, get some groceries or shower or sleep or, uh, you know, call my dog. People have been really strategizing to optimize their playtime while taking into account these queues. So since the launch, Blizzard has continued to keep bringing up new servers every now and then in pairs to try and help, you know, spread out the player base and alleviate some of these queues. And the question that I want to look at today is, is that too little too late? Should they have had more servers available at launch? Why didn't they? And is this actually going to help fix the queue times that Classic is seeing? Realm queues are a topic that Ian has actually tackled in a Forbes interview this week, and the reasoning that he gave for why they didn't just start with more of them is that they are anticipating a large drop-off in players in Classic over the first some amount of time, and they don't want to open too many servers too early, because after those tourist players who are just either bandwagoning for the hype or just kind of checking it out out of curiosity but not planning to stay, after those people leave, they really, really, really don't want to be left with a bunch of underpopulated servers, especially for Classic. On Live WoW, dead servers are a problem, but things like the Dungeon Finder and cross-server groupings and the Group Finder and cross-server rating has made it so there's not that many aspects of your gameplay that are affected if you're on a server with fewer people. It's largely contained to available guilds and the auction house. But on Classic, your server is everything. And if there's nobody on your server, it's going to be very difficult for you to have the game experience that people are all signing up for. So that's been their reasoning for not just going ham in with servers at launch and instead having more servers ready to go and bring up as they kind of gauge how many people are playing and how long the queues are and what the situation looks like. Having said that, I am skeptical that that was necessary. It's it, like, I, I, I get that you don't want to have dead servers and I get that it's very hard to gauge what the drop-off percentage is going to be. It's hard to tell how many people are in it for the long haul compared to tourists, compared to bandwagoners, compared to tourists and bandwagoners who didn't think they're in it for the long haul and then they play and fall in love and stay forever. It's impossible to know those numbers and it's better for them technically to estimate low and have queues for a while, which are a temporary problem versus estimating too high and having dead servers, which is more of a permanent issue. So on paper, this seems like the right move, but you start to get a little thorny once you consider that there their solution now of opening up more servers after launch, while it might help queue times, the problem is that I feel like a lot of people that were planning to play Classic got in right away. You're going to have some people that heard about it on the news and decided to come back you know, later in the week. But for the most part, people already had their plans. They had their friend groups. They knew months in advance what classes they were going to play. And now they're four or five days and four or five days worth of playable hours into their server and their character grind. And not only are there no free server transfers, there is no server transfers at all. So you're asking people to abandon their week's worth of classic marathoning and start completely fresh over on a brand new server. I think the solution works great for people that are coming late and find their friend group late. But for the problem that exists now, I don't think it's going to do much because not only are you asking people to re-roll, even if somebody does say, okay, I'm going to walk away from an, my entire week's worth of effort in this character and re-roll in a new server, you then have to ask them to either leave the friends that they had set up to play with or talk all of their friends into doing the same. That's the other big draw of Classic is the communities. I think that the best way to fix this problem would just be to have free server transfers available, guild transfers even, not forever, but for a period of time, especially now at launch, when people do need to kind of shuffle themselves out along these new servers to make sure people can actually log in and play when they have time to, without having to resort to crazy things like oscillating fans or dipping duck birds to keep themselves logged in while they try to sleep. They have talked before, they did an AMA on Reddit about the classic launch before it happened, and they did say that they were considering free server transfers as a possibility, but we're already five days in and we haven't heard anything else about that, so it's hard to say if that's a solution that they're actually going to do. As far as my personal WoW Classic experience, I did get to play a little bit at launch. I thought it was charming. I thought it was super cute how everybody was lining up for quest objectives and helping each other and working together, and that was really cool. I am currently 
really invested in live wow so i'm putting more of my time there and i feel like i'm just saving classic for like a rainy day or a mental breakdown or a midlife crisis i feel like it's the perfect game to have like uh stored away so that if you are up at four in the morning you know with your life falling apart not saying that mine's going to but you know it's nice to have things prepared just so that if and when your life starts falling apart you know you always have wow classic there does that sound ominous? Nothing's wrong. I promise I'm fine. As for me in live wow, I started, I don't remember if I talked about this last week or not. I started a healer alt. I'm having my yearly, I'm going to be a healer phase and we'll see how long it lasts. But now it's kind of combined with an, ooh, I could also tank on this phase because I'm playing a monk. And I don't know how it took me so many years to clue into the fact that Mistweaver monk is super fun. I thought that maybe the healing class for me hadn't been added to the game yet, but then I actually played a little bit more Mistweaver Monk and figured out the difference between a kick and a punch and a palm and a, uh, a hoppier kick. And I'm just having a great time. So she's level 66. She's a Dark Iron Dwarf. She's very stylish. And I can't even decide what I, I like. I want to tank and I also want to heal Mythic Plus and I also want to heal Arenas and I probably don't want to heal Raids, but you know what? I, whatever. Just throw it on the list of things that I say I'm going to do that I'm not going to do, but I've been having a good time. And for me, that's more or less been basically it. This week just vanished on me. Questions for this week. Jared asks, I currently use an Alienware laptop from 2015 for PC gaming, but would like to consider upgrading to a more up-to-date desktop without breaking the bank. Uh, advice on buying hardware, where to find deals, and assembly. So the place that I recommend you start are the PC part picker build guides. And the build guides are basically part lists with like a little bit of extra info on what the rig is for. So I would start there, just browse through them, browse at rigs that are kind of in your price point that are set up. There's lots and lots and lots of great budget gaming rigs. You don't need to spend a ton of money to get something, especially for WoW, that's going to run WoW really well. So browse those and get a feel for the types of graphics cards and processors that people like to use in budget gaming rigs. And then depending, you can either build it yourself. You could just order the parts from a build guide and put it together yourself if you wanted to. But if you're not feeling up to that or you just don't want to go that route this time, you could um, try to find a local shop. Many places will have local computer building shops that allow you to work with the staff to put together a part list and they will build it for you for a fee. Or there is a digital version of that with websites like CyberPower or iBuyPower, whatever, that you can actually just pick each individual component in your rig and it'll price it out for you and they build it and ship it to you. So that's kind of what I would recommend. Just kind of get a feel for what parts people like to use. What are the popular things for rigs for your purpose in your price range and start from there. Uh, Valcor Ice asks, are your WoW posters in the background organized in any particular order or is it just random? So now that I've moved my desk, you guys can actually see all five of them. And yeah, they are in an order, or at least they were back when you can only kind of see three and a half of them. And it was my my personal rankings of them because you've got Cataclysm right behind me and that was my favorite, don't at me. And then Mop is hidden behind my microphone. This is harder than it looks. Mop was below that, followed by Warlords, followed by Burning Crusade. I didn't play Burning Crusade and don't at me. And then um, uh, I don't, I used to have the vanilla one in a different spot according to that ranking. And I don't remember where she went, but I had to move her because back when I filmed with my old camera, the autofocus would continually pick her face over mine. So I had to move her to the other wall. But yeah, it's my, it's my own personal rankings. Don't at me. <laughs> And that has been my week. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer in one of these videos, please leave them in the comments of the most recent vlog with the word question. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. I mean, I, I, got, a, I got a little baby humidifier. That's not interesting, but it like sits back there next to my Calathea and some other plants that probably don't hate the humidity. I know the Calathea wants it. I don't really know which other ones are mad about it. So I've just put anything that looks vaguely crispy back there in the like tiny little humidifier corner. And I wanted one of the cute ones. They make them that are like little cacti or like little uh, whales that like spurt the mist up from the top. The whale makes more sense than the cactus, but the cactus looked happy and the whale looked kind of mad about it. But um, then I read reviews for those products and they didn't seem amazing and they were also kind of expensive and I just wanted a little humidity back there. So this is a story that would fit better on a stream.